Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna make it a sling messenger bag. It measures in at 14 by eight with a four inch depth. So all around it's a great daily or travel bag. And this project is great for beginners. You're gonna acquire new skills that you can use in future projects. I also have a bonus video coming for this bag on my TikTok and my Instagram. I decided to take the denim and acid wash it. So if you wanna learn how to do this step, and if you're using denim, definitely go check out my TikTok or my Instagram. I have a quick little video on there that takes you through the entire process. And with all that being said, if you're new to the channel, grab that printable pattern and let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you're gonna need one yard for your main fabric and I recommend grabbing a canvas, denim, or twill. These are all nice durable fabrics that will yield a great project. I'm gonna be using a denim that I acid washed and if you do wanna see a more in-depth video on how to acid wash, comment down below and I can totally make that happen. You'll need one yard for your secondary fabric and this is gonna be a lighter weight lining. A lighter weight cotton or polyester will work perfectly. You'll need four zippers, two 22 inch zippers and two 10 inch zippers and if you can't find 22 or 10 you can always go above 22 or above the 10 inch mark because we're gonna be snipping the ends so anything above those sizes will work perfectly you need one lobster clasp and one strap slider and you can either get one and a half inch or two inch and this is depending on the webbing you're gonna use you will also need one and a half yards of webbing and that's either gonna be one and a half inch width or two inch width but the biggest thing you want to make sure is that you grab the matching hardware for the width webbing. So just to recap that, I have two inch webbing, two inch lobster clasp, and a two inch slide adjuster. You'll need two one inch D rings. And this is what the lobster clasp is gonna clip onto. So you don't need this the same width as your webbing. You'll need one snap button closure and you can go magnetic or regular. I'm gonna be using a magnetic snap. I've been using them in a ton of projects and they're really easy to install and fun to use. And for a nice little touch at the end, you'll need four zipper pulls. This is totally optional, but it really adds a nice detailed professional look. Lastly, you're gonna need your pattern. This pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is print it off, tape it together, and you're ready to go. And once you print it off, I recommend cutting off the top and one of the side edges. This is gonna help you overlap the pages for a perfectly aligned pattern. And once you have your supplies gathered, your pattern printed out, taped together, it's time to move into cutting. After you're taping your pattern together, it should look like this. And for the best results, make sure your printer is aligned. Moving into cutting, you should end up with four backside zipper panels, two cut out of your main fabric and two cut out of your lining. Two front side zipper panels, one cut out of your main fabric and one cut out of your lining. Two front side panels, one cut out of your main fabric and one cut out of your lining. Two back side panels, one cut out of your main fabric and one cut out of your lining. Two strap top panels, both cut out of your main fabric. And you have two different sizes, one for a two inch webbing and one for a one and a half inch webbing. Two pocket flat panels, both cut out of your main fabric. Two front bottom pocket panels, one cut out of your main fabric and one cut out of your lining. Two front top pocket panels, one cut out of your main fabric and one cut out of your lining. One inside pocket top panel cut out of your lining. One inside pocket bottom panel cut out of your lining. And lastly, five main front back panels, two cut out of your main fabric and three cut out of your lining. Once you have all your pieces gathered, we're going to start construction with the front top pocket panel. Grab both of the panels, place the right sides together and stitch at the top edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the wrong sides together, lining up the top edge, add a few pins, and we're going to add a top stitch. I'm going to be using an edge presser foot to get a nice straight even top stitch. And this will also help me keep a uniform top stitch throughout the bag. This presser foot is not needed, but it really makes for a professional look. Using the pattern, we're going to place it on our panel and mark out the stitch guides. And simply fold at each one of the markings. Add a couple pins to secure into position, and we're going to stitch just like our top stitch at both of those markings. You want to make sure each one of these is as even to the edge as possible. This is going to give us a little bit of depth to that front pocket. Grab one of your main front panel main fabric layers. We're going to place a pocket in the center and as you can see it's longer than the actual panel so we're going to move it in so that we're lining up the edges with the edges of the main panel. So what we're doing is using the main panel as a guide so we can get the correct width for our pocket. You just want to make sure both of the edges are lined up and once you have them lined up, place a few pins in your folded areas. From here we can move the front panel off to the side and grab our 10 inch zipper. Place the 10 inch zipper right sides together on the bottom edge and we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Feel free to use a zipper foot if that works best for you. And the zipper is longer, I like to use longer zippers because we're going to snip it later on. 
Next, we're gonna grab the front bottom pocket panel. Starting with the main fabric, we're gonna place it on the opposite side of the zipper, lining it up with the top pocket panel. Flip the pocket over, and we're gonna place a lining on the opposite side, lining up both of the pocket panels. Pin the layers together and add a stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold the bottom pockets flat with wrong sides together and add a top stitch. Adding pins will help keep the layers lined up on both sides as you're stitching. Again, grab the main front panel that we used in the previous step to line up the pocket, and we're gonna do just that. We're gonna line up that completed pocket assembly, pin it down, and start by adding a stitch to the top of the zipper. This is gonna be our division between both of the pockets. From here, we're gonna grab a lining from the main front panel, place it on the back with wrong sides together, and pin around the outside edge, and before we stitch, we're gonna move the zipper train to the inside of the panel. I like to pin both of the zipper tracks together after moving the train, and then we're gonna stitch all the way around the outside edge as close as we can to that edge. This process is mainly to keep all the layers together so that way it's easier to assemble later on. And I like to double check to make sure all the layers got sewn together and from here we can place that panel off to the side. Grab both of your pocket flat panels, place the right sides together and stitch the bottom curved edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Try to make it as uniform as possible. After stitching, add a few notches to the curved edges. This will reduce some of that bulk for a more defined edge. After notching, flip the right sides out add a few pins, lining up the outside edge, and then add a top stitch. Try to make this stitch as neat as possible because it's gonna be front and center of your bag. And for this flap, I'm gonna show you a quick trick that's gonna help clean up that raw edge on top. What we're gonna do is simply just surge that top edge. This is gonna prevent future fraying and give it a nice professional look. If you're using a fabric that frays a lot, I highly recommend taking time to do this step. You can actually even do this all around the outside edge of your main bag. Just make sure you skip over the zipper areas. And by doing this step, it's going to make for a nice clean bag on the inside. But if you don't want to do this, I'm going to show you a different way later on in the video. Grab the pattern piece, place it on top of your flap, and mark out the button placement. Cut or punch out a hole where your marking is. And I'm using magnetic snaps. We're going to start by using the thinner side. I've come to find this side works great for the flap. Place it through your hole, grab your backing, and pop it onto the back of your magnet. Once you have it secured down, you can either use a press, pliers, or even a hammer to lock it into position. And it's really that simple to install nice, functional magnetic snaps. From here, we're going to take that finished flap and place it directly above the top pocket in the center. When you have it lined up, flip it over the horizontal axis, pin it into position, and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance or on the opposite side of your serge. Flip the flap back down flat, add a few pins, and add a top stitch. Depending on your fabric, this stitch can be quite bulky, so just take your time. Using the top magnet as a guide, we're going to place it flat and mark out where the magnet lands. Once you have your marked position, cut the hole, grab the opposite side of your magnet snap, feed it into the hole, place your backing on, and lastly, press it into position. After pressing, I like to do a quick test to make sure that everything lines up, and from there, your top pocket is complete. Grab your inside pocket bottom panel and your other 10 inch zipper. Place the zipper on the top edge in the center with right sides together and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure that zipper is centered and then we're going to grab our inside pocket top panel. Place it on the opposite side of the zipper lining up the edges and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. After stitching, fold both of the panels flat and add a top stitch to both of the sides. And these stitches are going to help flatten that seam down so we get the full surface area for the panel. Place that panel with right sides down, grab one of your front main lining panels, place it on top of the wrong sides together, and then take one of the main fabrics and place it over top of the lining. From here, we're going to stitch the layers together by stitching the outside edge as close as we can to that edge, and you can skip the zipper or you can move the zipper train to the inside of the panel. Just make sure to move that zipper train, and we can move this panel off to the side and grab our strap top panels. Place one of the panels with right sides down. I'm using 2 inch webbing. I'm cutting it at 57 inches and place it directly in the center of that panel. And place the opposite panel over over top with the right sides together, sandwiching that webbing in between both of the panels. Stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance, and you want that webbing to hang out about a half an inch. Just like before, we're going to cut notches on both of the corners to reduce some of that bulk, and then flip the right sides out. Pin the layers together to help line up the edges, and we're going to add a top stitch all the way around that outside edge. We're going to be stitching back over that webbing, so I can't get pretty bulky, so take your time. And this is going to help make that strap extra strong, and we want this to be extra strong. You can even add another box stitch if you want, but this is where most of the tension is going to be pulling on your bag. Grab the main back panel, place it inside down, and using the pattern as a guide, we're going to mark out the top strap placement and both of the D-ring webbing placements. Grab the completed top strap panel, line it up with your guides. Grab your 1-inch D-ring and a 4-5 to five inch strip of 1-inch webbing, place it on your guide marks with about a half an inch hanging over the edge. 
repeat this for the opposite D-ring placement, and we're going to stitch these all into position by stitching as close as we can to the outside edge, locking our top strap and D-rings down. From here, we're going to finish a strap, so grab your lobster clasp and your strap adjuster. Start by sliding the strap adjuster onto the opposite end of your strap. Feed your strap through both of the openings and slide it back one to two feet. Next, feed your lobster clasp onto that same end, and then we're going to take that strap end and feed it back through our slide adjuster. This is done from the bottom, and start with the outside opening and feed it back through the inside opening. Pull the end out a couple inches, and we're going to roll the end over and add a tack stitch, securing that webbing down. This is going to hide the webbing raw edge and also give it extra strength. Go back and forth a few times to really lock it into position. And that's going to complete your strap. Feel free to lock it into either one of the D-rings, and this is going to be easier decided when you can actually wear the bag. Slide the panel off to the side and grab your back side zipper panels. Grab your 24-inch zipper, place the right sides together on the main fabric, centering the zipper, and place the lining on the wrong side. When all of the edges and the zipper are lined up, go ahead and stitch at a quarter-inch seam allowance. This stitch is fairly long, so it's best to use pins. After stitching, flip the wrong sides together, flattening out both of the panels, pin the layers down, and before we add our top stitch, we're going to add the opposite side of panels, place the main fabric to the right side, and the lining on the wrong side. It's very important to make sure that all of the edges line up on both sides of the zipper, and then go ahead and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. And again, we're going to flip the panels open with wrong sides together, add a couple pins, and once the layers are lined up, we're going to add a top stitch to both of those side edges. And with this stitch being right out in the open on the front and center, it's really nice to have that edge presser foot for a nice, neat stitch. Also, matching the thread to the fabric really helps. Next, we have the back side panel and our completed zipper panel. Place the right sides together with our main fabric and the right sides together for our lining. Sandwiching the zipper panel in between both of our back side panels. Pin the layers down and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance over the zipper. Next, we're going to stitch the opposite sides. So grab the main fabric, place the right sides together, and do the same thing for the lining. Place the right sides together. Before we stitch, move the zipper train to the inside of the panel, and then go ahead and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. With the backside panel sewn together, we can next add a top stitch to both of the side seams. Again, this can be a little bit tricky going over that zipper and the extra bulk, so just take your time. After stitching, we're going to flip out the zipper ends and trim them flush with the seam allowance. And repeat this process for both of your zipper ends. And that's going to become our new backside panel assembly. Moving on, grab our front side zipper panels. In our second 24-inch zipper, place the right sides together on the main fabric. In the lining on the wrong side, lining up both of the side edges and go ahead and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just like before, fold the panels flat, pin them down, and add our top stitch. We don't have an opposite side for this panel, it's only going to be one side of the zipper. Try to make the stitch as symmetrical as possible. Grab the front side panel and we're going to place the main fabric on the right side of the zipper and the lining on the opposite side. With all the edges lined up, we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance over that zipper. Take the opposite end of the side panel and line it up with the opposite end of the zipper panel and do the same thing for the lining. Don't forget to move the zipper chain to the inside of the zipper panel. We don't want that side of the zipper to be flopping around, so we're going to pin it tight up against the side edge and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the right sides out, make sure all the edges are lined up, and add a top stitch to both of the side seams. I recommend take your time going over the zippers. It can get pretty bulky and you don't want to break the needle. After stitching, trim both of the zipper ends flush with the seam allowance, and that's going to become your new front side panel assembly. And next, we're going to grab our back panel and mark the centers on both of the panels. With the centers marked, we're going to flip the lining out, grab our front side panel, mark the centers, and place it on the inside of our back side panels. Lining up the markings, place it off to the side, grab our main lining, mark the center on both top and bottom. Using those markings, we're going to line the side panel up with the lining panel. Pin all of the layers together, and just to make sure you have the front side panel on the inside and the back side panel on the outside. From here, we're going to stitch all the way around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Can be one of the more trickier stitches because you're working with a lot of different layers and trying to keep everything lined up is very tricky. So just take your time and make sure you're working with your machine. Next, mark the centers on the main back panel and we're going to line them up with the centers on the back side panel. And make sure you're only pinning this back panel to the back side panel. When it comes to sewing these loops, I like to keep the side panels pointing down on the machine facing the feed dogs. The side panel is a little thinner and more stretchy, so that way it's going to get pulled through the machine instead of pushed and stretched, causing it not to line up. This is just something to keep in mind to really help all your panels come out aligned. After stitching, we can snip the zipper ends flush with the side seam. Same goes for any webbing sticking out of the side seam. 
After neatening up the inside edges, we're going to flip the right sides out and check all the layers from the outside. This is going to give us another look to make sure that all the layers got sewn together. When all the layers have been checked and cleared, we're going to flip the front side panel up so the lining is facing out. Move the panel off to the side and grab our main front panel. Just like before, mark the centers and then line up the centers with the front side panel. When everything is lined up, pin the layers into position and stitch all the way around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. I would even say that this one is trickier than the last one, so take your time when it comes to going around the corners. Just like the previous steps, I like to keep the side panel facing down towards the feed dogs to help keep both of the layers lined up as I'm stitching. But do whatever works best for you. And again, snip the zipper ends after you're done stitching, clean up the inside edges, and then flip the right side out to make sure all the layers got sewn together. Once you're satisfied and all the layers are sewn together, we're going to flip the wrong sides back out and add double fold bias tape to all the edges on the inside of the bag. You can skip this step, but I'm gonna walk you through a few different methods. The first method is using a bias tape making kit, and this is where you make your own bias tape. It's super simple to do. You cut your bias tape strips, feed it through your folder, and press it as it's coming out your folder. And by picking this method, you get to choose the size and also the color of fabric to match your project. The second method is using a double fold bias tape binder. You install this to your machine and it gives you the ability to sew directly onto your garment. It's a very fast and effective technique. The third technique is using pre-made bias tape. This technique you're very limited to colors but it's easy to do. You just fold it over your edge and stitch it down. This is a great way to go if you don't have a lot of tools to work with. And I'm going to be stitching mine on using the double fold bias tape attachment. By far this is one of the best techniques if you're planning on making a lot of bags. This bias tape gives strength and also a little bit of structure to those corners on the inside of the bag. Once all the inside edges are bias taped, flip the right side of the bag back out and we're going to add zipper pulls. Zipper pulls are simply added by feeding the loop through the zipper and then the zipper pull end back through the loop. Pull it tight and you're good to go. It really adds a lot of functionality and detail to your bag. The final final step is to test it on, adjust the strap, and then add your branding if you have any branding of choice. I like to place my leather straps in various areas that I can use them also as clips for keys and other items. And there you have it, your sling bag is complete. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Like always, if you have any questions or you wanna see me make something, definitely comment down below or message me on the website. But until then, I'm gonna keep the videos coming at you, so I'll see you next time. Gotta think about it